good day. I'm Sergeant Rogers with RSP Debt A out of Panama City, assisted by Sergeant Johnson. Today we're going to cover social media behavior. Understanding why. Social media has become a big part of our lives. Social media can help people and Army organizations share information. It also helps soldiers, family members, and Army civilians to stay connected to loved ones. Although we enjoy and depend on social media in your profession as a soldier, you are required to use social media responsibly and carefully. This class will help you identify strategies for protecting yourself and your organization. Terminal Learning Objective Action Determine proper and improper uses of social media. Conditions given in a classroom or virtual classroom environment and the following instruction. Standards exhibit proficiency in identifying proper and improper uses of social media. Social media, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and any other social media apps. As a soldier, don't share information that you don't want to become public. This includes name, rank, family members' names, anything as such. Here's an example of what you shouldn't be posting. PFC Sheffy. She puts on here, this is me laying back in my car hiding so I don't have to salute the 1700 flag. As you can see, this is disrespectful. She doesn't have any army values. Something like this is what you do not post. Another example, funeral detail. Soldiers are suspended for disrespecting casket photos. Once you put something out there, you can't control where it goes. Operational security opsec. Be cautious when you're accepting friend requests and interacting with people online. Don't share information with people that you do not know personally. Many people or many programs social media programs you can accept friend requests or request to be friends with somebody that you may not know just by looking at their picture or seeing something that they've posted unless you know somebody personally you don't need to be putting any information out there for other people to read or see geotagging so obviously when you take pictures and post them you can find out exactly where that person is or where they're located once they post something. Recommend it that you turn off the geotagging so people can't find you instantly. Family and social media. Obviously, being overseas or doing any kind of drilling status anywhere outside the local area, you're going to want to talk to your family. Social media is there for that. It is a good way to communicate back and forth with the family and keep memories or make memories. At the same time, you have to be cautious of what you put on there. Make sure that your backgrounds don't have any sensitive material or anything like that located nearby or in the picture. The Soldier's Creed. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior task and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. What we, what we covered, terminal learning objective, determine proper and improper uses of social media, given a classroom or virtual classroom environment and the following instructions. Exhibit proficiency in identifying proper and improper uses of social media.
The next class we're going to go over is rank identification and reporting procedures. Understanding why. Every organization has leadership positions with certain authority and duties assigned to those roles. In the Army, people serving in various roles can be easily identified by the rank they wear on their uniforms. Learning the rank structure and the roles those who wear them feel will help you orient yourself to and function properly within the Army culture. This class will help you identify those Army ranks. Terminal Learning Objective, determine military rank and reporting procedures for officer and NCOs, which means non-commissioned officers. Conditions, given a task to identify enlisted and officer ranks and how to report to an officer or NCO. Standards, exhibit proficiency in identifying military rank and correctly execute the actions to report to an officer or NCO. Enlisted rank. Proper identification of rank insignia and reporting procedures will greatly enhance your success while in the Army and in the Army National Guard. Recruit sustainment program and basic combat training, advanced individual training, and throughout your military career. Private E1. Usually, you'll see someone with no insignia there and either just a blank camouflage patch over it or the Velcro side that attaches. E2 is the chevron by itself placed in the center of the chest and on the hat. Private first class PFC E3 is a chevron with one rocker. Specialist, which is the shield, is Place center of the chest and on the hat as well with all rank insignia. Enlisted rank. Corporal, which is also an E4. Sergeant, E5, which is three chevrons, SGT. Staff sergeant, three chevrons with one rocker. Sergeant First Class, SFC, three chevrons, two rockers. Master Sergeant, E8, three chevrons, three rockers. First Sergeant, E8, three chevrons, three rockers, and a diamond in the center. The difference between Master Sergeant and First Sergeant. First Sergeant is the lead NCO within a company and is in charge of the company leadership on the NCO side, non-commissioned officers. Master Sergeants are there to assist in executing plans and operations. When referring to Master Sergeants or First Sergeants, you will refer to them as Master Sergeant or First Sergeant. Sergeant Major E9. Three chevrons, three rockers, and a star in the middle. Command Sergeant Major CSM E9. Three chevrons, three rockers, a star with the wreath in the center around the star. Sergeant Major of the Army, E9 SMA. He will have two stars along with the eagle in the center. When talking to an E9 Sergeant Major, you will address them as Sergeant Major. If you address the Sergeant Major of the Army, you will address them as Sergeant Major. Warrant Officers. Warrant Officer 1, 
is a rectangle with one square in the center. Chief Warrant Officer 2 is a rectangle with two squares in the middle. Chief Warrant Officer 3, rectangle with three squares in the middle. Chief Warrant Officer 4, rectangle with four squares in the middle. Chief Warrant Officer 5 is a rectangle with a line down the center. When addressing warrant officers, you will address them as sir or ma'am. Warrant officers are experts in the field of their choosing. Officer ranks. Second Lieutenant 01 is the gold colored bar. First Lieutenant 02 is a black bar. Captain 03 is two bars with connections in between. When addressing any of the officers at this level, you will address them as sir or ma'am. Officer ranks continued. Major is a gold leaf. Lieutenant Colonel 05 is a black leaf. Colonel 06 with the eagle on holding on to arrows. When addressing a Lieutenant Colonel 05, you will address them as Colonel. When addressing a Colonel at 06, you will address them as Colonel. Brigadier General 07 is a single star. Major General 08 is two stars. Lieutenant General 09 is three stars. General 010 is four stars. When addressing anyone in the general rank, you will address them as General. A way to remember the general ranking will be B, my little general. B stands for Brigadier General, my Major General, Little Lieutenant General, and G is for General. Failure to improperly identify military rank and insignia or to temporary or improperly address officers or NCOs demonstrates poor military etiquette and disrespects this time-honored institution that we are all proud to serve. Reporting procedures for indoors. Center yourself two steps away from the officer or NCO. For officers, you will go to position of attention, sharply salute the officer, and state, Sir, Ma'am, Private Jones reports. You will hold the hand salute until it is returned from the officer. Then you will remain at position of attention and execute or report what you need to report. Once you are done, soldiers execute an about face and sharply exit. When addressing an NCO, you will go to the position of attention, then to parade rest, and then address the NCO and let them know what the information is or what is going on. Once you are done reporting or talking to the NCO, You'll go back to the position of attention, about face, and sharply exit the area. When outdoors, you will center yourself two 30-inch steps away from the officer or NCO. When reporting to an officer, you will, position, you will go to the position of attention, sharply salute, and state, sir or ma'am, this is Private Jones. You will remain at the salute until it is returned. Once it is returned, you will drop the salute, 
give your information or receive the information from the officer. Then, once complete, you will do an about face and exit the area. When you are reporting to an NCO, you will not salute. NCOs are reported when the platoon sergeant receives a report from the squad leader in information and when turning over a formation. When reporting to an NCO outdoors, it is the same as previously indoors. You will come to the position of attention, parade rest, address the NCO. Once you receive the information or have given a report, you will return back to the position of attention, about face, and move out. The Soldier's Creed. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Terminal learning objective. We covered determine military rank and reporting procedures. Given a classroom, virtually, we have identified the ranks of officers, both officer and warrant officer and NCO, non-commissioned officers. The standards. You will exhibit proficiency in identifying military rank correctly and execute actions upon reporting to an officer, warrant officer, or NCO. Next subject we're going to cover is Army Values. Understanding why. Values are the corporate and individual guiding principles for behavior. They are the walk behind the talk. To be successful, the Army must be a value-centered institution with a moral justification rooted in the fundamental principles cherished by all free people, as stated in our Constitution. This class will introduce you to the seven Army core values and how they apply to your life as a soldier. Action. Define the seven Army values. Conditions during training sessions, opportune training, and under observation in normal performance of assigned duties. Standards. Define and discuss the seven Army values and their importance to the soldier and the Army. We are a value-based organization. Our country holds the armed forces to a higher standard and expects its professionals to reflect the ideals of American values. We are expected to uphold the Constitution and have a strong respect for the rule of law, human dignity, and individual rights. Wars are fought and won by soldiers, not machines. Because of this, every soldier must reflect the Army values. The seven army values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. When using the first letter of each army value, it is leadership. The army is values, the army value is based the base organization, General Dennis Reamer, Army Chief of Staff. Army loyalty entails the correct priority of soldiers' obligations and commitments to the Constitution, the Army, the unit, other soldiers, family, friends, and finally yourself. Loyalty demands commitment.
duty, Army duty entails fulfilling professional, legal, and moral obligations. Duty means accomplishing all your assigned tasks to the best of your ability. Duty requires a willingness to accept full responsibility for your actions of oneself and those of one's subordinates. Respect. Army respect means to promote dignity, consideration of others, fairness, and equal opportunity. It includes a sensitive sensitivity to and regard for the feelings and needs of others and an awareness of the effect of a person's behavior on them. Respect also involves the idea of treating people justly. Selfless service. Army selfless service signifies action based on proper priorities. It places service above self. The welfare of the nation and the accomplishment of the mission come ahead of personal safety of the individual or the unit. Selfless service requires you to give credit where credit is due, never unjustly taking credit for something you did or did not do. Honor. Army honor demands adherence to a public moral code, not protection of a reputation. Honor is a moral virtue, a state of being or a state of character that people possess by upholding the values that make up the Army's public moral code. Honor depends upon the exemplary, exemplary display of integrity, courage, Loyalty, respect, selfless service, and duty. Integrity. Army integrity means possessing high personal moral standards and being honest in word and deed. It involves the consistent adherence of actions to one's personal moral beliefs. The goal over time is for your private moral code of integrity to converge with the publicly declared code of moral of honor for the army. Personal courage. Army personal cur courage manifests physical and moral bravery. It depicts the military virtue that enables us to face fear, danger, or adversity no matter what the situation is, whether it be physical or moral. Personal courage is the strength to do what is right, to adhere to a higher standard of personal conduct, to lead by example, and to make tough decisions under stress and pressure. The Soldier's Creed I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Terminal learning objective, the actions, define seven army values. Conditions, during the training session, opportune training and under observation and normal performance of assigned duties. Standards, define and discuss the seven army values and their importance to the soldier and the army. Next, we'll be covering general orders. Understanding the why. In all professions, new members, what to know, what to do, and why they are doing it. General orders are something every soldier learns and utilizes on the job. This class will explain the reasons for guard duty and how applying the proper procedures outlined in the general and special orders 
will ensure your success. Terminal learning objective, know the three general orders. Given a guard post and a set of special orders, standards correctly perform the duties of a soldier on guard in accordance with the special orders and recite general orders without error. General order number one, I will guard everything within the limits of my post and quit my post only when properly relieved. While you are on guard duty, your actions are dictated by the three general orders and special orders. Knowing these orders is crucial to completing the assigned mission. General order number two, I will obey my special orders and perform all my duties in a military manner. General order number three, I will report violations of my special orders, emergencies, and anything not covered in my instructions to the commander of the relief. Special orders. Special orders are established by the commanding officer. Special orders differ at various posts, depending upon the nature of the area being guarded. All guards must memorize, understand, and comply with general and special orders. The Soldier's Creed. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Terminal learning objective, actions, know the three general orders. Conditions, given a guard post and a set of special orders. Standards, correctly perform the duties of a soldier on guard in accordance with the special orders and recite general orders without error. So now that we've covered the classes today, you will be expected to know these when you show up to RSP drill at your location, whether it be Panama City, Miami, or anywhere in between. After you're done watching these videos, you need to text RED1, R-E-D, the number one, to your RSP NCO or admin NCO. If you do not have the information for your RSP or admin NCO, contact your recruiter with Red One. That way they can track that you have watched these videos.